Hey everybody, today I would like to share with you my own personal immortal game. So recently I played a tournament called the Pfalz Open in Germany, close to Frankfurt and Mannheim in a small town called Neustadt an der Weinstraße. And in the very first round I played against Pascal Kassai, young German player with a rating uh, around 2100. And I was playing with the white piece and it turned out to be an incredibly exciting game. So I'm really happy and excited to share this with you right now. So let's get into this. And this time, this is actually my third recording. This time I need to switch to the board view. I don't know what's going on with me. All right, here we go. So the Sicilian it is, and more specifically the Can variation, or in German it's also called the um, Paulsen a6. Now bishop d3, knight f6, and here what would like to go e5, but there's a problem here, queen a5 check picking up this pawn. So castle, now e5 is a threat, and black has two ways to respond to this threat, either going d6 directly or first playing queen c7. And queen c7 makes sense to me because the queen, this is a very natural square for the queen in the Sicilian in general. Now queen e2, I renew the threat, so black goes d6 now, and here I go f4, once again having this idea in mind, sometimes can be useful, especially if black plays with g6, so my opponent goes knight bd7, once again stopping this idea e5, and now I go c4. And I really like this kind of position, I have this nice grip on the center, there's this typical Marocci bind, the pawns on e4 and c4. It's difficult for black to get any break in with b5 or d5. On the other hand, the black position is very solid. It's not easy for white to break through either. And here also we see, by the way, why earlier in this position I went bishop d3 and not knight c3, which would be a typical other development move. So I still have this option to go c4 in some lines. So let's return to the position. My opponent continued his development, bishop e7, knight c3, castle. And here I was pondering whether to put the bishop on d2 or e3. And while I was pondering which is the right square, bishop e3 is, by the way, what I have in my analysis, I thought about a different move and I went for it. I went g4. Somehow I was in an aggressive mood. I was like, let's attack him, go g4, go g5, and see how he responds. And actually g4 is not that great of a move, but difficult to figure out for black how to respond. My opponent went h6. There's a strong reply here in d5. And this is actually very typical. There's this rule of thumb. If your opponent plays on the wings of the board, so push the pawns forward on the king side or the queen side, then you should react with a pawn push in the center. Open up the center, which makes sense because you want to open up the position so that you can get to your opponent's king because now you can see I have weakened my king considerably. So it makes sense for black to open up the position. And this works because of the c takes d5, just first of all this pin. And now white doesn't uh, black doesn't take on e d5 when white could probably respond nicely with e5, but black goes e5 himself, plays on the dark squares and has very nice compensation here for the pawn. So that was the way to go here for my opponent. He played h6. Now I play bishop e3, b6, and now I decided to take direct action. I went g5. Takes, takes. Now knight e8 is forced. If the knight goes to h7, I can push further with g6. And this is a problem now for black. Cannot keep everything together if black takes e6 is hanging once e6 is falling then the, all these squares open up d5 and it's just it's just a mess for black so knight e8 was forced and now i went crazy i mean this is just looking back now it's just insane i sacrificed a piece here i was very confident convinced this is winning and i'm going to crush my opponent but that was just pure arrogance and also, not very clean calculation, honestly. So I went knight takes e6, which looks attractive, but it's not, it's not 
the best move in a position. The best move would have been to not sacrifice a piece, but just continue an attack without sacrificing a piece, going rook f3, followed by rook h3. And I think I looked at this briefly, but somehow I didn't like it. But I don't know what I didn't like. Or maybe this is the line here. Knight e5, bishop e2. Well, actually, this is this all looks very logical. Queen h4 is coming. You cover h5, so knight h5 doesn't help much. Um, Black is struggling here. I want to show you guys just really quick this one cute variation I found here. And in this position, uh, white can play the move knight to f5 which is just ridiculous i love this move uh g takes f5 and knight takes f5 results in mate right away because of bishop h5 check in this position and e takes f5 opens up the d5 square and then all hell breaks loose for black just a cute little line i want to show real quick so rook f3 was the way to go to bring the rook to the h file and create really strong threats so knight takes e6 what did i have in mind well my opponent took of course and now i played e5 that was my point to open up the bishop and to play queen h5 to g6 as an idea and i was very confident but you know slowly i was becoming worried because my opponent was playing pretty fast so he played knight takes e5 and now I play queen h5 expecting my opponent to go g6 i mean this was the move i mostly calculated and here's actually a lesson for you guys to learn if you are uh, calculating sacrifice like that or you're going deep down a line make sure you don't miss anything at the beginning because that's actually oftentimes what happens that we miss a move in the beginning and that's what happened to me here i so my opponent played knight takes c3 and we'll get to what i missed in a moment but first let's just check g6 which is also interesting um, but it looks like white is, has the upper hand here bishop takes g6 knight takes it's pretty much force is also this knight is hanging on e8 so knight takes queen takes knight g7 i was looking at this position calculated for a while and then i realized bishop d4 is quite strong here actually black can still hold on playing very precisely here going bishop takes g5 i only looked at e5 i believe but that allows knight e5 and bishop takes b6 and it is all all gone for black um but bishop takes g5 actually rook takes f8 king takes f8 rook f1 check and now not king g8 because then white well, can go knight e4 and all the white pieces are participating in attack. White is winning. But knight f5 and after queen takes g5. White is better, but black is still fighting here. Alright, so back to the game. What I had missed. And it's slightly embarrassing. So my opponent took on d3. Of course, I'd seen this move. But I thought I would just win here. <laughs> but that wasn't the case. I played g6 and... In all the lines, I only looked at, well, knight f6 now. And if knight f6, of course, I take and queen h7 will follow. Queen h7 and checkmate. And I, I discounted rook takes f1 always because I thought, well, if now, now the rook is even covering f8, there's no way for black to escape here. But the problem is that now black goes knight f6 that that's the game and now if the rook takes f6 bishop takes f6 black actually has an escape for his king so there is no checkmate and i find myself with a rook and a piece down so that was not the best situation to be in of course i saw this coming now after uh, my opponent played knight takes d3 here i realized hold on <laughs> am i just losing in the first round of this tournament against a 500 rating points lower rated player um so that was not a pleasant situation to be in obviously and the lesson here is obviously for one uh calculate cleanly and don't be arrogant and for two um don't take unnecessary risks like that the position didn't require it i could have gone this other way with rook f3 so this is some 
some lesson for you guys uh, also to consider in your own guy own games so I was very lucky that in this position I realized hold on there's still something going on this is not that lost I can go knight e4 and this is what makes this game so incredible to me I'm down a rook and a piece and still I have enough play here this is just mind-blowing black is not even better in this position and actually has to find precise moves to hold the balance it's just ridiculous I mean thinking about it I'm I only have a queen knight and bishop left as attacking potential but still I can create enough threats so now I would really like to take some time to dive into all these beautiful variations that that uh, can emerge in here uh, so just to point out real quick my opponent played bishop b7 and so we'll get to this move last and I want to show you guys some of the possible lines so first of all what is going on what's the threat well the threat is that I want to go queen h7 check let's just make a random move black go a5 and then take on f6 and now black cannot take back because his queen is pinned okay so this is the general threat right now so that makes you wonder maybe why can't black just move the bishop let's say just take on b2 what's the problem well here the problem is for black that then can now go bishop g5 covering the e7 square and black is having big problems as he cannot prevent checkmate in any sensible manner so this is what's going on and it turns out it's really difficult for black to to play a sensible move uh, just real quick what happens after queen takes c4 well knight takes f6 g takes runs into queen h7 followed by queen f7 checkmate and king f8 here this force mating line and it's beautiful how all the white pieces are participating and checkmate in the black king so another move you might consider is the move queen d8 and here this is actually a quite a possible line here it's important for white to go queen h7 check first not go bishop g5 immediately bishop g5 the point is here to deflect the bishop from protecting this pawn so if black was to take then white would give a series of checks and in the end this pawn is unprotected and white checkmates but black can do something else after bishop g5 that is give a check on d4 and now after king f1 uh, black can give this check and that's why white needs to go queen h7 first and after queen f8 check now it's it's all over knight f6 but black can just give the queen and he has three pieces plus a rook which is more than enough material and there's no mate and it's game over so instead of the queen d8 white needs to go queen h7 check excuse me check first and now bishop g5 because now in the same position there's no queen f8 so black can only give his queen this way but now white has an extra piece plus continuing his attack and is actually a little bit better here let's see some moves here knight h7 bishop takes b2 and here uh, white is picking up another piece <clears throat> and has some better chances so that was queen d8 so king f8 is also of course a very obvious try just run away right but now knight takes f6 and here black cannot take because i give a check i give another check and now this pawn is running and g8 queen is coming in next move it's all over for black so this is why black cannot take but another move you would consider is just king e7 and first I thought well that's gonna be it there's nothing I can do here but then I saw this cute little move queen h4 how nice is that defending the knight on f6 <coughs> g takes f6 just transposes to what we have just seen and black actually this is working for black if he finds queen b7 here which is not an easy move to make <clears throat> and here black is holding his own and it should result in a draw i think i need to drink something because my mouth's getting dry i'm 
just too excited about this game. <laughs> and here, very nice tries B4. <laughs> the point is that it takes away some important squares, and black cannot take on B4 because then knight D5 check, and now there's checkmate. And after b4, okay, there's several lines for black to draw, but one line is rook b8. And now let's just go down this line real quick. <clears throat> and yeah, it is just craziness once again. Even though just three attacking pieces, it's enough to create decent threats. And actually, in this case, it's black who's giving the perpetual in this position. <laughs> Black's giving the perpetual. Insane, just insane. And of course, this is all computer analysis. So this is one way to equalize. The other way would be, which is just also incredibly difficult to find, is queen a7. And this is also very funny. Why queen to a7? Because there are some check ideas here. So if we go down this line, now, if queen h8 check, here it turns out that white cannot make any progress because g7 black could just take and this is a draw. And if bishop h6 check, king e8, now you might think first, well, just g7 and wins, but there's a counter, b5, and black is winning. Suddenly it's a mating attack. Check, and e5 check, and this is made the next move. So white would need to give a perpetual here, going back and forth with the queen. As you might guess, it's not surprising my opponent did not find these moves. I don't know if I if I was able to find them either. I mean, this is really, really difficult. A move actually that I considered during the game that I thought was the strongest, d5, but once again, this is not working. The point of d5 is to create a route for the king to escape. So if now knight takes f6, now black just plays bishop b7, and the idea is that the king can run towards d6. And I thought this is good, and actually during the analysis we didn't see anything either. But check out this move. Oh, hold on. You know what? Let me do an exercise for you guys here. Actually, I want to do this for more points in the game, but Let's do an exercise right here. Why to play? If you can find this move, I'm very impressed. But try it out and see if you can find Stop the video right now and dive into a position and try to figure it out. All right, so what's the move? C5. Amazing, amazing move. Well, I was just talking about taking away the square and that's the point, but What's going on after b takes c5? Well, there was another point in playing c5 that is to take away the c5 check from black. And now, white can go bishop g5. In the other position, just to recap, if bishop g5 immediately, then there's queen c5 check, and now king h1, and now we see the bishop is very nicely placed, just black plays d takes c4 and wins. So this is why white goes c5 and now bishop g5. Just threatening a knight move pretty much. Knight takes d5 and covering the square. Or also qu queen h8 and knight e4 maybe. There are all kinds of ideas. Or queen h8 and knight takes d5. And the best play I can do is queen a5 now to move the queen out of the, out of the attacking range. But now... There's another forced line, and at the end, the Black King is being hunted down. This is it. Black has to give to Queen one way or the other, King b4. Yeah, queen takes b7. It looks really nice, King a4. And Queen b3. All right, so that's all I want to show in this position, and it's just so incredibly rich and so amazing that White has still enough play left. So my opponent played bishop b7, but this is losing now. Now it takes on f6. Probably the best try would have been to go d5 here to transpose to what we had just seen and see if I can find this amazing move c5. 
Um, but my opponent went for queen c6, which is threatening checkmate, but it's just too slow. Now I give a series of checks, and here, by the way, notice the aesthetics. Um, oh, hold on, let me draw it now. Dim, dim, dim. Zigzag. Now king c8, queen takes e6 check, king c7. If king b8 at this point, then I can go knight d7 check, and king a7, bishop takes b6, uh, king c8, knight e5 check, picking up the queen, and king c7, bishop takes b6 check. And black also has to give the queen because this is checkmate. So my opponent went king c7, and here I was sloppy. Uh, I thought, you know, it's just game over. And it is game over, it's true, but still, you want to be precise till the end. Um, I played knight d5, which is winning, but it would have been better to go queen e7 back. And if now king c8, actually you can go like this, queen f8 check, which I didn't see in the game. Uh, knight d5, king d7, and now queen f5 check, king d8, and this will be checkmate. So black would need to go king b8, but then knight d7 check. And we have seen this in a similar way already. Um, now king c8 is the only try. Knight takes b6 check, king b8, and now queen d8 check has to go bishop c8. Now there's no checkmate anymore because the bishop is on c8. And now I have the time to go g7 and g8 is coming. Black cannot seek any counterplay because of queen takes c8. So that would have been the best way to finish this game. So I played knight d5 check. And now I want g7. Because if king a7 now, I can take on b6. And also black has no other way to stop this pawn. So my pawn resigned, uh, which I was happy about because I realized after playing this that black can still fight on with knight c5. And the point is that now after g8 queen, king a7, both my queens are hanging, so I need to give one back. Which is not too bad, because I'm still up a pawn and have active pieces, and I'm going to win this because I have a good, great bind on the black position, very active. But still some work to be required, and you just want to make sure you stay concentrated and find the the easiest win or the cleanest win I guess where your opponent cannot put up any resistance anymore all right so that was my immortal game which was unintentional obviously if I had seen this move uh, knight takes c3 followed by rook takes f1 I would have never gone for this obviously because it's just way too risky and unbelievable that it works so well I mean it's not an advantage but it's incredibly difficult for black to defend and in the end, I managed to play a beautiful, sacrificing game. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, <laughs> I definitely did afterwards. <laughs> Dirty game was, well, shaky to say the least. And I'll see you again very soon. And also, if you want to, I have more na game analysis about this tournament. You can check them out in the description. All right, see you guys. Bye-bye.